It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. Welcome back to the program. As promised at 7.33, and we have on the line with us Senator Linda Collins-Smith. Linda, welcome back. Good morning. How's everyone today? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Joe's doing well. The audience, I feel like, is doing pretty good. And at least those of them listening over on Facebook. Uh, how, how, are, uh, how are you, Linda? I'm doing well. I'm just glad to be here and be up after the long days I'm putting in, getting ready to get this campaign going. Yeah, I know. I mean, everybody is uh, everybody's getting into campaign mode because the primary. And, you know, it's interesting. Um, at this point in Arkansas, uh, the, the primary is really the general election in a way because people, uh, you know, just kind of assume that Republicans kind of have it in the bag. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of a it seems a little bit strange this year. Uh, does it to you? Yeah. I, it seems strange. That's a, kind of the way I have. I feel is it's a an odd year. Um, I am kind of glad that. Um, Democrats, some of them are running uh, as Democrats. I think that's the way it ought to be. Yeah. And I like that. And I actually have a Democrat opponent. And I have, you know, I, I have a primary. So I think that's the way things uh, ought to work. And But I am glad that the Democrats win. Uh, so, you know, I think they ought to be proud. They've had their candidates uh, running. And I think that, that uh, that's the way it ought to be. Yeah. And uh, I like that. Well, yeah, I mean, anytime you can get clear contrasts um, is, is really a good thing. And, you know, I, I, what I mean by, you know, I think that the platform of the Republican Party is extremely popular. And so, you know, when we have a lot of these primaries that are going back and forth, or, you know, more, we got we got way more Republican primaries than we do Democrat primaries. So, L Senator Linda Collinsmith, I wanted to ask you about uh, this letter. We were talking about it yesterday, but you wrote a letter requesting an attorney general opinion um, on, you know, uh, this concept of, uh, you know, carrying a weapon. Can, can you tell us a little bit about that and your motivation again? Well, you know, there's so much. Everyone says there's controversy, and I think there, there's confusion more than anything. And it creates that, of course, and you're right. But it's it's very disturbing to me that you know, that is, you know, I'm older than you are, Paul, and, and then there are those that are that are older than I am, and they, 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 they ask me the question is, can you clear, clear up the law for us? Because I said, well, I think the law is clear. I don't think there is any confusion. I mean, I think it's just people are, are confused because why aren't they arresting people then? Mm. They're not out there. The, the law enforcement are not out arresting people. And, and I don't understand that why is everyone going along and not just, you know, why are you just doing, carrying your gun a certain way? The law did not, I mean, show me where the law changed. I, I, I'm, don't make me confused. So I wanted to clarify, uh, to have this law clarified. And I think by making the letter very specific to the Attorney General yeah. so that we, we weed out everything in the letter that we say, don't answer the questions that you've already answered. And that's the way the letter was written. Don't address 576. Don't act 576. Don't address anything else. But very simply, the question is, you know, answer us on concealed carry. Where, where does it say that you cannot conceal carry? And if, if you do conceal carry, what is the penalty if you're caught concealed carrying? And so answer that question. And, and of course, I believe that this, there is no penalty. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I know the Patriots of Act Seven Four Six would agree with you. I mean, they've got like a thousand dollar reward if you can find the statute that says, you know, uh, that if you're concealed carrying without a license, that you are, you know, breaking a law. And what what's the punishment? What are you supposed to do there? You know. And so I I, I think it's a a really uh, a good idea to just let's just get it straight i mean i know it might not see here's the thing i think some people in positions of power some not all but i feel like they believe that it's going to be unpopular to uh you know just tell everybody what the law is tell everybody yeah this, this is what the government cannot arrest you for doing this thing because of what the law says and i just want to get to that i want to know i want to know what the government's going to allow me to do when it when it uh, concerns carrying a weapon. And I think everybody should have that. Everybody should know that. It should be crystal clear. 
just so we have a reasonable expectation of prosecution or, you know, not being prosecuted. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. And I think that we have to be, um, first of all, I am, you know, I believe that I should be able to carry a gun. I always use this, uh, this, I say this all the time. I should be able to carry that gun in my hair if it's thick enough to hide it there if I want to, you know, <laughs> because it's not, my hair's not, it's like baby fun hair, but, but I, I'm, I'm just making a point that I, that's, I'm an individual and I should be able to carry that gun if I want to or not carry that gun, but I'm going to fight for your right to carry that gun. And so if you want to carry a gun, don't want to carry a gun, carry it concealed, carry it open, that's your right. Carry it in the truck, don't carry it in the truck. And so I want to fight for your right to be able to carry that gun. And whenever you look back at, at when I grew up, you know, then we talk about this all the time, that we carried them in the truck, we carried them in the school, they carried them, it, you know, you were able to carry your gun with you, and you were always on a journey because you, you were traveling so far, and, and it was much more, you know, the rural areas that I grew up in. And, and there was the day, you know, I'm thinking that I'm as I'm older than you are, Paul, and I look at that, and then I'm looking at, at my father's and my grandfather's and the way they traveled. I mean, you were alone so many times. And you look back at an article, an article that's very clear, and I'm going to mention a person, and this is very important to me because we've had conversations before, and they're very mature and common sense, but they're, this is intelligence here. David Ferguson wrote one of the best articles that I could ever, you could, you could even think of that if people will go read this article, and it was written on uh, February 17th, and it was published um, in Call for Action, published this article. Uh, that You need to go read that. But if you, if you will think about this article, it was 2013 before, or, or 1995, when the hand, uh, concealed handgun law passed. So think about that. It was just 1995 that they started doing a concealed handgun mm -hmm. uh, law. So think about that. So I want you to think that we've been carrying uh, guns. And then when, when Tim Loggins with Patriots Act, and I listened to his, I was not around yesterday. I was in, in, a, in an area where I didn't have uh, phone signal. I couldn't get, get your, the program to hear it until this morning. But when Tim Loggins talked about Act Patriots, I mean the uh, 746, uh, um, I mean our um, law that we passed. Yeah, the, enha the enhanced carry. carry. Yeah, enhanced carry. Yes. No. 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 Uh, in 2013, uh. enhanced. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Act seven four six. Yeah, yeah. Yes. When we did seven four six, and he talked and he read that again, very, very plainly. And you read that. I cannot see where anyone can be misunderstand the laws. And I think what happens is. When people turn back around or we have a letter comes out that says one thing and you have people get on the news and say something else, when, when people who have a, a, a voice and they stand in front of in a platform in front of the media and they can, they can say things that are different than what we think the law says, that's very clear, but yet they can say it in front of the media and they have, or you have a legislator that says something different I think that is a confusion because they think they're the authority versus uh, what is law. And that's the confusion. And people start saying, oh, clear that up. Oh, clear that up. And they see all these different things that are in print. But why aren't, why aren't law enforcement out there just arresting people? They're not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. They are not out there arresting people all over the place for a concealed carry. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I... I, I... I agree. Um, it, it just and when when you, do, when you do have incidents, I mean, when you have the rare case that someone is arrested, you have uh, no one. You, you have prosecution not prosecuting the case. That's Eventually, right. they drop the charges after they make someone's life pretty miserable for a time because you know who who wants you know you're exercising your rights and now you're going to get arrested and you had to go through all that process but then eventually there are no charges or, or you know that they you, they don't pursue the charges and it's very frustrating for a lot of people. Well, it is, and it's worse than that because sometimes what there what happens is there are other charges. There's a reason that you're stopped or something, but that they'll drop that charge or they'll they'll you know add it or there'll be some you know you'll agree to do something mm -hmm. else. 
And that's the part that's probably concerning because what happens, I think, is, is they'll agree to drop that portion maybe uh, in an agreement somewhere else or maybe a fine or something, and you never take that part to court. Yeah, That doesn't ever go all the way, and so you don't have that part challenged in yeah. court. So, and that's what we need then if challenging in court, so this, we don't go all the way to the next level. We're talking with uh, Senator Linda Collins-Smith. The, bill, or the uh, article that you were just referencing by Mr. David Ferguson, um, was it entitled Good Intent but a Bad Gun Bill Support Act 746 instead? Is that the one you're talking about? No, no it is dated on, um, it says, uh, oh, it was posted on January 17, 2018 and updated on 2 17, 2018. And that was, um, this is dated, Senator says, show me the prohibition. Show uh, me the penalty. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 and yeah. That, yeah, that, that one. Okay, we're going to get that one up there on the yes, screen. Yes. So. One of the most clear descriptions and, and why there's confusion. But that, when you when you look that it was just 1995, and, and that's not that long ago when you, when you look at how long people have been using guns. And it just makes to me no sense that we have this kind of, of controversy when we are Republicans, we are conservatives, but we have individually have the right to have a gun. And there is no reason we shouldn't have them on our person and our vehicles are about us if we choose to, as long as we are responsible, law-abiding citizens, and that we're not being irresponsible. There's just no reason that we shouldn't have those. Yeah. And, you know, that we should be able to to have them if we want to and on our person yeah absolutely yeah here we have it on the screen show me the prohibition show me the penalty uh senator linda collins smith has requested an attorney general's opinion to end the confusion over whether you must have a license to carry concealed handgun um and it's really really uh, like i said it's just it's really good and we're awaiting the attorney general's opinion i think it's been almost 10 weeks now uh so we really want to know um, where is where is the penalty? I just want to thank you for putting this out there because eventually we're going to get a response uh, from the AG, and I, I know she's working hard on it. And um, I, I really think it's going to provide a lot of clarity to the citizens of Arkansas, not just in your district. I mean, this is something that is going to affect everybody across the state in a really positive way because I think it's going to really clarify uh, how the government is uh, going to treat people uh, and, and you know, your, your human right to defend yourself with a weapon. Yes, and I, I want to say something about uh, Mr. Ferguson on this. When I told you I mentioned, you know, we look at the different years and we look at, at, at history when we're talking about uh, this era, uh, era of, of history and age and, and, and actual life experiences, and then you look at law. And, you know, I think Paul telling the listeners, who is David Ferguson? I think you should tell them that mm -hmm. in his experience and why not only his age and, and, and our our experiences of life and, and, and David being even older than I am, but tell them who he is and his experience to your listeners. Mm -hmm. And he wrote this article uh, and why this, when I was talking about this and how important this was to me, to ask this question, tell the listeners who David Ferguson is. Yeah, uh, he's the former director of the Arkansas Bureau of Legislative Research, a 32-year career as an attorney for the Arkansas legislature, and after retirement from state service, his primary focus, he writes, has been beef cattle farming. He's also a former officer of Conduit for Action. Um, and so David is, uh, you know, he, he knows how here's the thing a bureau of legislative research attorney their job is not to just help legislators craft bills uh they also have to figure out how that bill if passed into law is going to affect every other part of the code um and 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 you know if it's going to contradict or not so it's an exhaustive amount of research they got to be they got to know what they're talking about and so so this so so david picking up on this letter that you wrote this requested opinion from the ag I think he knows what he's talking about. Well, and, you know, is it constitutional? Is it not constitutional? Are we going to have constitutional issues? And uh, so it's a, you know, and, it's, and, and then there's just that when he wrote this, this is just one of the most clear use of in life. And you think about the timeline in our life of when the, when the change happens. Yeah. And so for me, I looked at that letter, that article. Then when he wrote that after my request, 
Yeah, I mean, and I here, that that was, let, let me let me read this because you're talking about the the timeline. Okay, we're talking with Senator Linda Collins Smith. So before the concealed handgun law was passed in 1995. You were at risk of being charged with the offense of carrying a weapon, whether you carried openly or concealed, and you had the burden to prove it uh, to prove it in court that you were carrying under one of very few narrow exemptions. When passed, the concealed handgun license offered a way to carry concealed without the risk of being charged with a crime. But in 2013, the offense of carrying a weapon was changed so that you weren't in violation of carrying a handgun unless a prosecutor could show you intended to employ the handgun unlawfully against the person. It was soon recognized that 2013 law allowed you to carry openly if you weren't in place where handguns were prohibited by law or the property owner. But confusion was created concerning the carrying of a concealed handgun, with some people saying the mere fact Arkansas has a concealed handgun law means you must have a license to conceal carry. The problem with the argument is that it's based on an assumption and not on what the concealed handgun law says. Even without being required, the concealed handgun license still has value. License has benefits. Several states recognize it, the reciprocity and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, anyway, so, yeah, I mean, that's what he says. That's the timeline you're referring to, right? Yes, it is. Yes. And, and that's the timeline. But I just thought that this was a very good article for for people are wondering what we're they come in late to this and they're wondering what we're talking about they could refer back to this particular article that was written after i requested the um statement or the you know the information and you know the opinion from the attorney attorney general yeah and um so i thought that that was that would kind of pull this back together uh from that i thought he did a good job on pulling that that kind of that timeline together yeah definitely we just took that article we posted it up on the facebook page uh the live stream uh right now with the uh, people who are watching that's uh facebook.com slash conduit news that's facebook.com slash conduit news um so let me real quick we're talking with senator linda collins smith uh how did you think real quick we because we got to go to break but what did you think how'd the fiscal session go how'd the special session go just generally what are your thoughts on that senator linda collins smith um, I, I was very proud that we did not do uh, legis regular general session type legislation during fiscal session. I was proud we did not do that. Uh, I am really um, I'm proud of our colleagues for not doing that, and uh, I'm thankful that the governor did have a special session after that for those types of bills. Uh, I did not. I thought we went way too many bills on. Um, special session. I did not like that we did the uh, a couple bills there. I thought we should have held off on. I did not like that we ran the one bank uh, lending type bill through. I thought I thought that was kind of a mess. It was kind of messy since we don't have time to talk about it. Yeah. We need to take and hold that for another day, and I'll be glad to elaborate on that one um, another day. Yeah. But I did. I think that we did the right thing this this year. We did not. Do any of those type bills during uh, fiscal, but I will say that uh, I thought it was a rubber stamp uh, fiscal, and I'm disappointed that when we had an opportunity to not uh, expand, do the Medicaid expansion, um, private option, Obamacare, uh, by all kinds of names, you know what I'm talking about, yeah. that we expanded it again, and I think we let the people of Arkansas down. And um, I'm heartbroken for the neediest of Arkansas. I think we let them down. Yeah. Senator Linda Collins Smith, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank All you right. for having me. Everybody have a great day. All righty. Folks, we got to take a break back in just a moment.